Chapter 2, Family. Family is everything. Your family are the first people you meet when you enter into this world. And in most cases, they are the people that you will spend the most of your time with until you leave. They are solely responsible for teaching you the rules and giving you the knowledge, wisdom and understanding required to navigate this plane. Not all are as fortunate as others. And for those born orphaned or into less fortunate circumstances, their life schooling begins immediately. There is no guarantee, though, that being born into a loving family will put you in any better stead than an orphan living on the streets. Because as previously mentioned, it all comes down to a person's level of consciousness, awareness, and how they absorb and apply the information all around them. The School of Life, Lesson 1, is family. My understanding of the family is this. The family is a team or company of compounded information, beliefs, habits, strengths, weaknesses, and much more that has been learned and taught generation after generation after generation. That's how some people seem to have natural attributes and abilities, like a sporting family, banking family, or musical family. For example, you hear of a child prodigy whose parents put a violin in their hand as a toddler, and with not much training, they master the instruments effortlessly. The thing is, that while some families live their whole lives barely aware of this concept of what do we represent as a family, or even thinking past the holiday next year, there are some families who have documented their history, generation after generation after generation, created rules of existence that they have passed down for centuries. They have taken their habits to a point where they could be seen as ritualistic. Are they good? Are they evil? We will never know. I would like to think that due to the concept of duality, that it only stands to reason that there must be the equal of the two. It seems that the tables are stacked in their favour, but in truth, I do not believe that to be the case. What makes families like that different from the rest of us is upon birth into a family as such, they would be expecting you in a sense that not only have they been documenting their history in a fashion similar to what I think I'm trying to do now, but they would already have processes in place to educate their children in who they are their place in the world, and the mission at hand, which would have been executed again across the centuries. While I think the majority are living day to day, month to month and year to year, the ruling families, I think, would be writing their own rules in the sense of generational planning, a physical, psychological, social, financial, spiritual, martial business plan executed as best across history not losing touch of who they were and where they were heading. The furthest I think most people could trace their families without using family trees, websites or apps would be three generations. And that would be through stories passed down or pictures and memorabilia, not necessarily first-hand information. Circumstances, again, would dictate everything. Wars, migration, family feuds, illnesses, disease, etc., could all play a part in the direction one family takes in a few generations and where that ultimately takes them. In a way, that's why I believe that in documenting at least my thought process as best as I can now, I can then become the ancestor that my future relatives and whoever this resonates with might use to potentially better themselves. And as long as we keep doing this, then we can potentially refine ourselves through looking at the past, applying it to the present to change the future. In my direct family, there's me, my brother, and my mother. Due to the relationship breakdown between my mother and father's side of the family after his death, there's no solid relationship with my father's family. Even though after growing up and meeting and getting to know his side of the family, there is and will always be a slight disconnect as having grown apart from them. Not having any first-hand information on my father's character, just opinions of him, while growing up is probably what has brought about the initial obsession of documenting my own existence. Having grown and discovered exactly who I believe I am, it would be a shame to have come this far and not leave some sort of map for my future family or again, whoever this resonates with. We are Creoles. And what that means is that 
we are the transatlantic slaves that were repatriated to the African continent, Sierra Leone, after the Western abolition of slavery. Due to these circumstances, as per the example mentioned earlier, the majority of our family's knowledge, wisdom and understanding has mainly been orally and habitually passed down through the generations and not written, to my knowledge. Bearing in mind that a lot of this information has been lost and countlessly polluted through the generations as our thoughts, words, actions and feelings have been manipulated generation after generation after generation. This has got me thinking as I got older and studied myself, my history, my surroundings, my family and my habits. It really got me wondering as to which of my family's natural responses and traits have been involuntarily passed down through the generations. Have they actually been planted in our psyche or were these natural habits that we had developed ourselves? Even if we had developed ourselves as best as we could, I don't know whether orally or habitually passing down our habits would be enough for me going forward, as we could have easily been programmed. No matter how much we had developed ourselves, our ancestors had suffered over 600 years of demonic trauma, which is still going on today. First through slavery, then Jim Crow, and racism as you see it today. How are we to know for sure that we don't have underlying or dormant data programmed into us that we are subconsciously passing down through our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings. What makes it worse as far as I'm concerned is that, as far as I can remember, this is not a conversation I remember that has ever come up with anyone in my family. I look at it as heads in the sand, not questioning. Why some things are as they are? Why do we do certain things or behave in certain ways? Now, I'm not saying that my family up to this point has dropped the ball in any way, because we haven't. The fact that I'm even having this thought and putting it into words means that somehow, somewhere we have had this thought and it must now be documented. The way I see it is, it all comes down to habits. The habits you're taught as a child will program you to who you become as an adult and the way you see yourself in the world. This works over your lifetime and the circumstances of life can also play a major factor. It is the family's duty to help you learn how to read the code learn the different programs and languages. They will, however, inadvertently program you depending on their level of consciousness and awareness. It is though your job to know yourself and study yourself because only in that way can you then try to understand your own programming. Always asking the question, why? The funny thing about being human is that we are constantly programming each other and being programmed. It's entirely up to you what or who you choose to focus on as that is what will be programming you. This is constantly happening consciously and subconsciously. We come back to your life force, the power bar. Whatever you focus on and you allow to program or influence you will dictate your polarity or energy vibration, which in turn will determine over time where you find your life force on the power or life bar. Your family should be your first test subject. This is not going to be the easiest thing to do as by the time you get to a point where any of this makes any sense, you would have already been programmed subconsciously by your family and your environment. They must try to understand the people you're spending the most of your time with. Another theory is that you become like the five people you spend the most time with and vice versa. We're all creatures of habit and are consciously and subconsciously absorbing information, habits, patterns, etc., through every encounter, information intake, and experience. The reason behind studying not just our family, but everybody, is so to an extent you can start to understand what or who these people around you really are. At a certain point, you will be able to see the behavioral patterns and habits that friends and family have that are voluntary and involuntary. This, again, is the reason that an obese family will have obese children. And very rarely will you have a child that grows up in an obese family that snaps out of that family curse. It works exactly the same for diseases in a family that people call hereditary. Not saying that there's no such thing as a genetic predisposition, but I would bet that in most cases it will come down to family habits, be they dietary, thoughts, lack of exercise, verbal, etc. We all think that our habits or way of doing things is the best. But how many people, families or groups of people do you think have actually stopped to try and see how or why they do what they do? Whether or not they are or have always been the ones responsible for their own programming. I don't think 
you can ever completely stop yourself being subconsciously programmed. But I would like to think that the more you become aware of it, then the more control you take back and the better your life will be. The one thing that has always played on my mind after understanding how this works was how I felt after maintaining relationships with people and allowing myself to be programmed or influenced due to this illusion of having to be stuck with the group of people you grew up with who after careful analysis are only walking, talking sheep or zombies that are in deep generational hypnosis by family and environment themselves. Now the question is this, as a child growing up and being inadvertently programmed by your parents, siblings, neighbours, teachers, priests, imams, rabbis, friends, TV, music, films, books, news, etc., How can you tell me which one of your thoughts, words, actions or feelings are originally yours? Not just that, but how can you tell me who you are? It all begins with your family. They can either be your best friends or your worst enemies. Your family can only take you as far on your journey as they have managed to get on theirs. As much as they can feed you, clothe you, protect you and provide for you, there are other underlying things that can be overlooked that they can also pass on that even they might not be aware of themselves. Psychological abuse, narcissism, sociopathy, paranoia, fear, trauma, to name but a few negative traits that could have been nurtured and compounded through the generations gone unchecked and a trait that you or I could unconsciously be passing on to the next generation. It would be good to know that I am the sum of what I choose to be and not what I allowed someone with no awareness or control over themselves to influence me to be. When you actually think about it, you can hold no one at fault for allowing them to take control of you when you're not willing to take control of yourself. An idiot with a plan can be a genius without one. Warren Buffett. My only hope is that I can maybe trigger the thought that can wake up whoever this resonates with, for them to at least stop and try to figure out the program they find themselves in. What would be even better would be after analyzing your current state to then stop, smile and say, yes, I'm exactly where I am meant to be, considering where I've come from and where I want to be. 